Hello everyone, my, my, my name is Marian Monk and uh, I would love to present the LightSide 3 24-month analysis data for you. It was a multi-wavelength photobiomodulation study in dry age-related macular degeneration patients using the new Lumithera Valida light delivery system for treatment. And before I go into detail, I would really like to apologize. So um, I was supposed to uh, give my presentation um, live at your at the OMA meeting. Unfortunately, completely my uh, schedule got mixed up and I kind of mixed up the um, the the, uh, the times the time actually I thought really Greece has the time has the same time as uh, as Switzerland. So I really and deeply apologize. I was just too late. And this is why I just recorded the presentation. So you have uh, the possibility to have a look at these data as well. These are my financial disclosures. Relevant here is that I'm consultant for Lumithera. The LightSet 3 trial, like I said, was a randomized, double-blinded, multi-center trial uh, looking at the efficacy and effect of photobiomodulation in patients with dry age-related macular degeneration. This LightSet 3 trial was performed in the United States of, at 10 different centers, which uh, at with 10 very, very experienced um, retina specialists um, in. But what is the Valeda Light Deliver System? It's a multi-wavelength uh, low-level light therapy, which kind of applies three different wavelengths into the eye of the patient. The Valeda wavelengths are 500 90 nanometers, 660 nanometers, and 850 nanometers. So ranging either in the yellow, in the red, or in the infrared spectrum. And all these three wavelengths have particular effects on the cells and have a particular effects and modulation in terms of improving visual function and the, and the metabolism of the cells. One of the most important mode of action of these three wavelengths are the activation of the pseudochrome C oxidase, which is the main photoacceptor in humans, but also generally in animals. And uh, it leads in the pseudochrome C oxidase, so the different wavelengths bind into the kappa sites and kind of increase the protein gradient, which kind of improves the ETP production and therefore improving and enhancing the metabolic activity of the cells. So we get uh, more energy production, more ATP, we increase the blood flow, and there's also a lot of evidence that uh, the inflammation is kind of reduced. We also see a reduction in terms of EGF expression. We see, like I said, an improvement in blood flow, an enhancement of the NO production. And uh, we also see changes at the level of the uh, genetic transcription and at the proteins which are produced, all kind of going more into an anti-inflammatory um, direction and kind of uh, reducing the pro-inflammatory uh, state, which usually AMD eyes are in. The treatment itself uh, is the, the Valida system looks quite similar to any other ophthalmology office uh, treatment devices you see in, uh, in, in your offices today. Usually the treatment can be applied and administered by trained staff, so there is no doctor needed, and the treatment per eye lasts no longer than five minutes. There is no pupil dilation required, and uh, it uh, in the clinical trials, as well as in a daily practice, there are usually one cycle of treatment consists of nine flexible treatment sessions, which are delivered over three to four weeks, and patients require two to three treatment cycles per year. In the LightSet 3 trial, um, dry immediate AMD patients with a visual acuity ranging from 20, 20, 20, 32 to 2100 were included. 148 eyes were included of 100 subjects. And the patients were randomized in a two to one fashion, either into the active PBM treatment group or into the active sham treated group. What does active sham treated means? It means that the patients, even when they were in the sham treated group, they received some treatment. However, However, this treatment was 50 times and 100 times uh, lower in terms of the intensity than the real PBM treatment. 
The patients receive treatment every four months, resulting in six treatment series um, until the end of the study, which was at 24 months. The primary endpoint was after one year, and the primary endpoint was uh, improvement of visually function and visual acuity compared to the sham controlled group. Like I said, 100 subjects were enrolled of, of 148 eyes, and you can also see that actually the maintenance and uh, of the patients were quite good because out of these 148 eyes, 130 eyes completed the trial until month 24. And this is already the most important slide. It actually shows that the trial met its primary endpoint uh, in terms of visual function. So um, the PBM treated group showed a significantly better visual acuity improvement compared to the active sham group. And this kind of visual acuity improvement was maintained until the end of study, until 24 months. More specifically, actually, the PBM treated group gained in mean 5.5 letters after one year of continuous treatment compared of baseline. And then after two years, the visual acuity improvement was in mean 5.4 letters compared to baseline. And this was at each individual time point statistically significant when compared to the active sham treated group. And also here you can actually see that uh, nearly 60% of the PBM eyes responded with a more than five letter gain with a mean of 8.5 letters. There was also a subgroup of nearly 19% of the PBM eyes which actually showed a more than 10 letter gain with a mean of 13.4 letters. And there was even a subgroup of patients with gained more than 15 letters here. And please again keep in mind these were not patients with was AMD, these were patients with dry intermediate AMD. So their potential to gain vision is um, much more limited. We can also see these uh, effects and efficacy at the morphological level because when we kind of compare the Drusen volume change over time in the active sham group versus the PBM group, we see actually that the sham group gained after one year in mean three times more Drusen volume compared to the PBM treated group. And after two years, actually, the Drusen volume increase were four times higher in the, in the sham group compared to the PBM treated group. This is just one representative example where you see a patient um, with uh, at, at the age of 77 year old at baseline the visual acuity was 75 letters and after 13 months of treatment the visual acuity improved to nine, six, uh, 79 letters and then after two years, the mean letter gain or the letter gain was 80 letters. Correspondingly, you actually see that uh, on the representative B scan, the reduction um, of the central drusen here. And you also can appreciate here that despite the fact that the drusen kind of reduced and uh, resolved completely, that the um, ellipsoid zone and the complete outer retina remains intact. So no um, irora or serora has formed. Also, quite Quantitatively, you can appreciate the effect with the reduction in Drusen volume from um, 0.71 um, square millimeter to 0.49 square millimeter after one year. Um, also very, very important, I think, is not only the visual function benefit, but also we see a um, significant effect in terms of the reduction of the progression of these patients. So when we had a look at uh, the patients who formed new geographic atrophy in these uh, patient cohorts and eyes, we saw that after one year, 10% of the sham treated eyes had developed new onset geographic atrophy, while only 1% of the PBM treated eyes. And um, after two years, the kind of percentage of patients developed new geographic atrophy increased to 24% in the sham treated eye group, and only 6.8% of the PBM eyes had developed new onset geographic atrophy. And this was assessed by independent also masked reading center, the Duke Reading Center. And this was also highly statistical significant. 
Also, um, interestingly, the eyes who already presented with incomplete RPE and ultraretinal atrophy at baseline showed a slower progression to, uh, to geographic atrophy or to C aurora in the PBM treated group compared to the sham treated group. Here we see that actually patients who had aurora at baseline in 80% of the cases in the sham treated group, they had developed full blown geographic atrophy and actually this is consistent to the data we know from, uh, cl uh, from clinic and also we know from other clinical trials, uh, observational clinical trials looking at the conversion rate. But um, in contrast, in the PBM treated eyes, only 20% of these patients converted from IRORA to CVORA after two years. Of course, um, what is important here when we look at these data to also look at like potential risk factors for uh, the patients. Um, because, for example, in the PBM treated group, if there would have been more patients with subtrusional, subretinal drusenal deposits at baseline um, of, or, or in the sham group, of course, this would explain the higher conversion rate. But actually, when we have a look at the baseline characteristic, the opposite is true. We see that um, in the, the PBM group had uh, had a higher prevalence of uh, subretinal drusenal deposits at baseline compared to the sham treated group. So there was a 2.5 to 1 ratio in terms of showing SDD in the PBM group versus the sham treated group. So actually the PBM treated group was at higher risk for developing geographic atrophy, at least with looking at this particular uh, risk factor for geographic atrophy development. And we can also see that over the course, patients with PBM were less likely to develop new SDD compared to the sham treated group. In terms of ocular adverse events, uh, nothing really uh, stood out. So the safety profile was very, very good. Some patients reported dry eyes after the, after the treatment, but uh, uh, beyond that, no kind of signal, uh, safety signal stood out in terms of the uh, ocular or systemic adverse events. So in terms of this, I think we can summarize that the light set three met the predetermined primary efficacy endpoint with a statistical significant difference between the PBM group versus the sham treated group at um, month 13, um, and then maintained this improvement up to two years. We saw an improved best corrective visual acuity with a mean of more than five letter gain in the PBM eyes from baseline values um, at month 13 as well as at the um, end of study. And we also saw that more patients lost best corrective visual QTs in the sham eyes versus the PBM treated eyes, again, at both different time points. We saw a four-fold increase in drusen volume in the sham eyes compared to the PBM eyes, which was consistent also with the data from the LightSight 1 and LightSight 2 trial, suggesting also here a disease-modifying benefit. We also saw a statistical significant occurrence of new geographic atrophy, which was significantly higher in the sham group than the PBM treated group. And we also saw that the PBM treatment with Valeda showed an excellent safety profile. With that, I would really like to thank your attention. And again, please, I, I sincerely apologize again for missing my time slot at the OMA conference. I would have also loved to be here in person. Take care, everyone. Happy holidays and uh, Merry Christmas.